as always, it takes a combination of factors to work together at the same time that are years, maybe decades in the working, mm -hmm. uh, which causes the price to make the kind of move that we've seen the uranium market have, where we've gone from basically a decade of the price being around 20 or $25 per pound. It was like watching paint dry, just it wouldn't move, right? To uh, about a year ago, moving up to about $50 per pound, pulled back around 45. And now in the last 45, 60 days, it's moved hard and passed all those levels to a new level of $75 per pound. So the price is very strong. But to get to here, there are some longer term trends, Frank, that have been in the making. Mm -hmm. There are some near term trends and it's all coming together. So what's, what, you know, what are those things in no particular order? People like to say that we had 12 bad years in uranium. I would argue we've had 20 to 25 bad years in uranium. And what do I mean by that is if you actually look back over the last 20 years, in the last 20 years, we, we've had a total cumulative two, two and a half good years and 17 and a half, 18 bad years. Mm -hmm. So bull market rallies that we had in 2006, 2007 only lasted one year. That's not enough to really build an industry around, especially in mining, which is a long dated industry, capital intensive. Mm -hmm. The 2008 financial crisis cut that rally short. In 2010, we were starting to have a uranium market rally, and that was cut short by Fukushima. Mm -hmm. The two, 2010 bull market lasted a total of six months. Mm -hmm. Can't build mines in six months. And prior to that, we had the end of the Cold War. And in the early 90s, when the Cold War ended, we have to remember that the US basically offshored the whole nuclear fuel complex to Russia. It was a way to reduce the stockpiles of the former Soviet Union. The whole treaty that was signed, uh, basically the, the highly enriched uranium treaty to dismantle the Soviet era warheads, created a new source of uranium that wasn't a mine, but it had a strategic outcome for the US government to destockpile the Soviet Union uh, warheads. That killed the uranium mining industry as well. And that was a that was a that was an issue for a long time. So these are two decades of various trends that we've witnessed that basically has caused us to be in a place on the supply side of the equation today where we have a structural deficit. There isn't enough supply in the world to meet demand. Supply this year is expected to be 145 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Demand is approaching 200 million pounds. Okay. But all these years, we had a, available above ground inventories. The Japanese are a really good example of that. The country of Japan shut all its reactors down after Fukushima. They had inventory. That inventory helped balance the market. So even though there was a supply deficit, the market was being balanced by Japanese inventories. 